It's one of the greatest ballets ever created. Swan Lake is a huge honor and a huge responsibility. You can't go halfway with Swan Lake. Karen Kane is one of the biggest international ballet stars ever. I am directing for the first time. Left side, left arm. I have to feel so brave to do this. Swan Lake, that's definitely been always somehow my ballet. I do expect to dance as a swan queen. Everyone wants to honor the tradition, but racism isn't a good tradition. Ballet, it's like my angel, but it's also like my demon. Kelsey, you've captured an incredible moment in Canadian cultural history, and that is the end of Karen Kane's 50-year career with the National Ballet of Canada and her personally experiencing deciding to leave. Wow. <laughs> Were you concerned at all that she might be feeling a little vulnerable? I think when we had like an uh, initial meeting with her and we kind of pitched our idea essentially we said you know like we want it, it to be all access and like that's really important to us access is like going to make or break this project and she seems so unfazed by it that <laughs> I was never really worried I think it's just been such a part of her life you know her wedding was documented she's like yeah she's really used to it I think you're right like the challenge was to access a different side of her and a vulnerability yeah. but having the cameras there wasn't like so much of a concern and I asked her in London you know why she had said yes to letting us do it in the first place because she was putting herself in sort of a vulnerable situation and she said it's for the company like I wanted to I wanted these dancers to get the spotlight because you know what our pitch was definitely that it would be an ensemble and so I think she she knows and we all know that she's the hook that allows us to get the funding to make the project, but like it's an ensemble and and a lot of uh, dancers that maybe don't normally, uh, aren't normally in the spotlight um, were for this project. Yes, that was terrific. Some of these young, incredible dancers. So Karen Kane, uh, apparently now she's, um, she's working, uh, aiding retired ballerinas. So that's what she's doing in terms of her profession. Uh, mm. maybe moving away a little bit and living a life that she hasn't been able to live for five decades. How is she adjusting? Honestly, she's so happy. <laughs> uh, yeah, I kept sort of waiting for like the other shoe to drop of like, you know, hearing that she's regretting it or she's like yeah, having a hard time settling into retirement, but that does not seem to be the case. I think she was so ready. And if anything, she had been ready to retire for a while and it hung in there, especially through the pandemic. Well, you know, I can't think of anyone in Canada in the in the arts who deserves it more. She put <laughs> us on the map globally. Mm -hmm. She's mm -hmm. danced her heart out. She she's just a, a total icon. And um, she deserves it. And I'm so pleased <laughs> for her. I was so pleased. But it's a nice number to go out on 50. Yeah, it's, it's a nice round number, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's perfect. So you talk about having complete access. And I remember years ago, she wasn't that forthcoming in interviews and kind of had to work hard. And then you just sort of gave up and, and stuck to the standard stuff which I think at the time she was such a huge star and she felt it was invasive to her. And maybe with time, she's more relaxed with that. But my experience was different from yours. So I was really interested to see that. Congratulations. Yeah, and I think it also was with her knowing that she was going to retire. Yeah, and knowing that this was probably kind of it in terms of a big project um, featuring her. I think those things were all sort of part of the consideration of like, yeah, I don't think she had to worry about, you know, being the artistic director and how would this like land and all these things. She kind of was like, kind of in it and then goodbye, <laughs> which, uh, yeah, I think, you know, relaxes a person in a way. Yeah, I can see that now. Yes, you're right. Now her parting gift to the ballot was so many, but sort of the last 
cha-cha is that she created her own version of Swan Lake. And she, there was, she focused on the idea of the trapped women, which I don't think has been done before. Um, and she was advised against it. So tell me about that. There's like a moment where she kind of just is describing her vision to um, Ross, her husband. And that was actually, I think, one of the first days we shot the, the whole series. So mm-hmm. like that vision was very baked in from the very beginning. And even, you know, and she had been thinking and sort of working on that idea for a while. So I think it's a brilliant idea. I do and too. I also, and so timely. Yeah. But yeah, you and know, cinematically, I mean, it was like a lot for me to build on. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, very lucky you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but so it worked great for me. <laughs> like the patrons of the ballet who've been patrons for 50 years or whatever. I mean, to them, it, it might have seemed really woke. But I think it's a wonderful thing that she did. And what a great goodbye from her. So, you know, that I agree. Was, yeah very cool very cool looking back on her career did she sit with you and look at some of the footage or what was her relationship to going back yeah I mean we spent a day in the archives uh in her own archives which is at the National Ballet together going through stuff and that's kind of the the last scene um in the series where she's sort of looking through all those articles and photos and everything. So we spent some time, like time in her archive, but I think she was like, I I got the sense that like, she wasn't that interested in sort of ruminating on it too much. And I think, you know, the end is her sort of like, it's, it's like, uh, I think she kind of enjoyed the process of looking at the photographs and and stuff like that. Um, I don't think she's, she's too concerned, like with her own legacy. I think she's really at peace with herself and at peace with, with, you know, the work she's done in her life. So, you know, I think it, although it's like fun for her to sort of look back and it was kind of like, it, it doesn't seem to me, I think she's like, my sense is she's like much more interested in, in sort of like looking forward. And, and yeah, and, yeah, that's great. That is so good to hear. <laughs> but I can see that. I mean, she set out to accomplish goals, goals maybe she hadn't even thought of at the beginning and she accomplished yeah. and went way beyond. So really, you know, yeah. what's the point? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, <laughs> I understand. <laughs> so are, are, do you keep in contact with her? It's been really fun to like go on this journey with her. And even like on opening night it, uh, at TIFF, it was like such a beautiful, I mean, it was a beautiful moment to show her the film. Like we were, you know, myself and Sean O'Neill, who's the co-showrunner on the project. We, we sort of worked as partners on this. And when we showed her the film, we were so nervous because she hadn't seen a frame oh. of the film or the series. So it was <laughs> like the first time she was watching anything. We we rented a theater and she brought her um, her best friend, Julia Drake, and her husband, oh, Julia. Her husband Ross, oh, for and, yeah, and her brother uh, and his wife. So that's all she wanted at the screening. And um, yeah, we showed it to her and Sean and I sat in the back and uh we were so nervous we were watching her at moments she was laughing at moments she was crying and we're just like sitting there just like shaking oh my god what an experience yeah and and then at the end she stood up and she was like john chelsea like forget about me it's a beautiful film not that many people at this like point in their life get to be a part of something like this and so and so yeah it was just like a, a really yeah incredible moment that I'll like cherish forever and I think we are now bonded forever and so yeah I mean right now of course we're on the festival circuit and she's being really generous with her time and coming out for stuff and we're having a lot of fun uh she came to London and and such uh and it was yeah we're having a really nice time it's great to see these young dancers as you'd mentioned it's not their story But it was so nice to see her recognize their talent and their uniqueness and mentor them. So, you know, she did it again. She she's she's like a saint. She needs she needs to be sainted. (laughs) In Canada, definitely. I think she she is (laughs) she is the saint. (laughs) Well, thank you. You did brilliant work. And I know some of my friends in the Toronto Film Critics Society, we've been emailing this film is so good so you know oh thank you so much it's a truly a labor of love so i'm just glad it's like resonating with people
every day. We're balancing on the tip of a razor blade. you've cried. They mean a lot to me.